and I plead to the to the vet, like, save him. I don't care about the money. Just save him. They made sure to charge me for full treatment, what it would have been to save him, which was, <laughs> I think, over five grand. They charge um, you five thousand dollars. Yeah, they charged me five thousand dollars up front. I and kill you, Bernie. CVPs, welcome to my channel. I am Caroline von Petzold. Thank you for tuning in in this video. Um, if you're new here, welcome. Please hit the subscribe button and give us a like. This video is something totally different. Um, you read the title. So the story is that I have a friend whose name is Jessica. I am changing her name because she wants to stay anonymous. And the point was um, Jessica bought a high set Macaw last year. And she had really, really a lot of trouble with that high set Macaw because it got really, really sick and something really bad happened to that high set Macaw um, when it was in veterinary care. Jessica was really, really heartbroken about this whole situation. And I was there with her from start to finish, like once she got her high set Macaw till the end, how he passed away. And it was really, really heartbreaking. So I just encourage Jessica to tell her story, what she went through, because you know, I have a love-hate relationship with vets and I don't think vets are the best place to go to when your bird is sick. I believe in self-medication and you have to self-medicate parrots. I, so I just encouraged Jessica to tell her story and she agreed. Finally, she has healed enough so she's ready to tell her story because it was really, really heartbreaking. And this all went down this year in April. So now she has a little more distance and she's doing better emotionally and mentally that she's able to share her story with the world. So let me call Jessica right now and let's have a chat with her. My dad is here. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How about yourself? Good, good, good. So I already did the intro uh, with my YouTube channel with my fans, and we changed your name to Jessica. So I'm gonna call you okay. Jessica. Is that okay? Okay, yeah, 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 of course. Because I know you wanted to stay anonymous. Yes, please. <laughs> so um, thank you for tuning in, and thank you for doing this with me. Of course. Thank you for everything you've done for Zazu and I this whole entire time. Yeah, I know. It was really, really heartbreaking. This whole situation, what you went through was just yeah. so tragic that I just think yeah. that you you have a voice to tell your story to the world. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, tell your story. What happened? How did you get mm -hmm. your highest Maka and how old was he? Okay, so the highest in Maka was my dream bird for the cat past. I don't know, since I first met one in person, maybe maybe about two years, and I just absolutely fell in love with it. So it was last year that uh, my boyfriend decided to gift me my dream bird. So we were looking, of course, we couldn't find anything. A couple of days later, my boyfriend happened to find, I think it was the birds, bird.com or something like that. Um, and uh, I honestly thought it was a scam. And I thought it's too good to be true. There's no way. And sure enough, uh, there was one being sold in uh, Illinois from uh, Birdman's Parrots. So we left the deposit for it. He said it had, you know, recently hashed. It wasn't ready. Um, so we put a $15,000 deposit to hold him. And then we paid the balance uh, when he was ready to be sent to me. Um, altogether, we paid 28500 plus a couple of fees here and there for the flight and the, um, you know, like the, what they come in, the, the crate and things like that. Um, so, yeah, so then I got, I think Zazu was four months, four months, I think he was, when he was shipped to me. I know I got him October 4th. Mm -hmm. um but he was still on formula hmm. so
So October 4th, 2020, you got him. Uh, 2021. It was oh. last year. Yeah, it's 2021. Only, only been a year, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, he wasn't even a year old. How did you hear about me? So I, once I, uh, you know, getting was getting ready to um, have my highest scent um, shipped to me, um, I started doing a lot of research, obviously, and then I came across your videos, and I came across your book once. Um, I think I came across your book but right around the time that he was shipped to me. So then, thank goodness, just, I guess I went based on, like, hope and a prayer, and I was hoping that if I told you that I had gotten a hyacinth, you know, that you would help me with the free flight and the training and things like that. And so when I bought your book, that's when I reached out to you, um, you know, to ask you if you would be willing to, you know, train and help us with some classes. And I'm so glad that you did. Yeah, we had a couple of classes and he did really, really great. Like he was yeah. such a good boy. Um, yeah, he really was. Yeah. Um, so what happened to Sasso after you trained him and you were so happy with him and you learned more about Hyacinth Makas through my book and everything? So what happened to him? Um, so, you know, when we got him, it was part of the warranty that I took him to a vet and I got him checked. Mm -hmm. Um, well, the warranty got voided after because somebody decided the seller decided to change his mind. But when I got him, I got, you know, all the tests that to show that he was healthy and everything came back good, came back that he was a male because that's what I wanted. And, um, everything seemed good. Then early on, I noticed he started getting sick. Um, I got him in October and December, right before Christmas. It was right between Christmas and New Year's, actually, that week when everything happens to be closed. Um, uh, he started getting sick. Um, he started getting what I think you helped me determine what is sour crop. Mm. And um, so then I rushed him, you know trying to get him help i found a vet that was uh for birds specifically in orange county which i believe is called the bird clinic in um, orange um I actually have this name one second i can pull it up oh yeah there you go dr nemitz he is the bird clinic in orange took him there and did some, I, you know, I told him something's wrong with my bird, and instead of doing blood work at that time, he said, no, blood work's not needed. He instead decided that, let me do an x-ray in case he has something stuck inside that shouldn't be there. And, you know, trusting that he's the vet, I let him take a x-ray, which cost me, I think, over $500. Mm -hmm. Of course, there was nothing in the x-ray, didn't want to do blood work. And said, no, your bird's fine. And literally, I walked out of there with no answer about what was wrong with my bird. And, you know, you not knowing much, you take, you trust in these people that say they're exotic bird vets, experienced vets. So, you know, I thought, okay, maybe I'm overreacting. So I went and I took my bird home. Um, nothing. He wasn't getting any better. I spoke with you and I spoke with another girl who used to have hyacinths and, you know, they suggested that maybe it's sour crop. So then they kind of asked me, um, you know, to call Dr. Nemitz and ask him to give me medication for a sour crop and it helped the problem. So I thought, you know, a couple of days that Sazu was, uh, all better. And then that went on for a few weeks. Well, a little bit, a couple, what, it was uh, March? Yeah, March 20th that he passed away. So um, mid-March or beginning of March, he started showing signs again of sour crop. So then I didn't want to make the same mistake of taking him to the same vet who obviously didn't do much that I didn't, I would not um, recommend anybody to go see them. You recommended... The Alta, I think it's Alta Loma and Rancho Cucamonga. Yeah. 
the birth yeah, hospital. That vet, yeah, that vet was great. You know, they saw him immediately. Immediately, they drew dr- uh, blood. They did blood work. They did. They didn't do an X-ray. He said there's no point to do an X-ray, but he did do blood work and other tests to determine what could possibly be wrong with him. And that was honestly the only vet that I think did their job. As far as did the good job. Caring. The vet, yeah, I recommended he is, you. Yes, yes, he is a really good doctor, mm-hmm. but unfortunately, um, you know, we did we didn't have any results coming in for about two days because they had to send him to the lab. But in those two days, Zazu got really sick, and then that's when I was I they recommended that I take him over to the Access Hospital in Culver City, mm-hmm. and that was where my big mistake was. You okay. know, again um, trying to. Mm-hmm. Hold on, I want to like go back a little bit. So mm-hmm. this was like you went first to Mehmet, Dr. Mehmet, mm-hmm. and you paid like over a thousand dollars, five hundred dollars in extra or something like that. And he yeah, gave you the emergency results, visit. And then he recommended you to continue hand feeding him. Was that correct? Because he was still on hand feed fat formula. Yes, he was still on formula, and he still suggested that I hand feed him. Um, he did say I could offer, you know, other food as well, but he did um, say that these types of birds, they need to be hand fed for a long time and that they take a long time to develop. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's what he recommended. And that was uh, actually... Um... That was actually a mistake and that wasn't a really good advice because that's the reason why he got mm-hmm. sour crop with yeah. that because he didn't start eating on his own. Yeah. Because if he would have ate by himself and that doctor would have recommend you to wean him off because how old was he? Like nine, eight months by that time? Oh, by that time, no. Yeah, I think he was actually around eight months. Let me see, eight March, April, May, June, July, August, September. Yeah, he was eight months. He was eight months old, okay. Mm-hmm. So that would be time between eight and nine months to mm-hmm. wean him off. But this doctor says continue yeah. feeding him. Yeah, so, he's, yeah. And that was the first doctor you saw. The second doctor was my recommendation in Rancho mm-hmm. Cocomanga, and he was good. Yes. And he gave you a real diagnosis, which the first doctor yes. didn't give you. Yes. Well, he didn't give me the diagnosis specifically until, well, actually that day, yes, he sent him home with antibiotics and a couple other medication to tackle what, you know, he thought might be going on. Meanwhile, Mm -hmm. we were waiting for the test results to come in Mm -hmm. for the blood work. But that that vet suggested blood work, which the first one did not. The first one suggested only an x-ray and um, an x-ray can't really tell you much. This the second doctor recommended the blood work and, and all, all the labs. Right, which was also more crucial because they can see what's yes. wrong with his system in yes. the blood. Yes, The answers yes. are all so, in the blood. That is correct. So unfortunately, it was a little too late because Zazu really declined in the next day and, and the, the day after that. But when the blood work came back, then he even after Zazu had already passed away, that doctor was still checking in with me and, you know, went over the results with me and told me, you know, some things that were showing in the blood work, which made me regret even more that Dr. Nemitz didn't do a blood work back then because there were things that I could have caught months before and probably saved my bird. Right, right. But instead, he wanted to charge me five hundred dollars for an X-ray. Yeah, which was useless for like basically nothing. He didn't yes. have any broken bones. What can you see in the X-ray? Exactly, and and the X-ray. I feel like it kind of tried to defer me from what the problem was because I'm telling him my bird's not eating, my bird's not processing food. You know, yes. how do you take an X-ray? You see nothing, but then you still say, "Oh, your bird's fine." Just give it a couple of days yeah. it's like clearly my bird was not fine no so as a new like hyacinth owner how was for you the hand feeding process to um, hand feed a hyacinth macaw baby honestly it's not something that i would ever want to do again and it's not something that i would recommend just because um t- to me personally i know i try to do the best that i can but it's just so in my opinion very a very delicate thing you know the temperature has to be right the way you inject it into the bird uh it, it was 
there was a there was more to it than I originally thought. You know, people sell you a bird, they tell you, yeah, yeah, you can hand feed it, but um, it's not something that I would recommend or ever put myself or a bird through. Yeah, ever again because I know that was some part of the guilt that I had when he did have sour crop that maybe I didn't warm up the formula enough. Oh, actually, uh, Doctor Nemitz accused me of having the formula too hot and burning his crop. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that was one of the things that he said. Well, maybe his crop, you gave the formula too hot and burned his crop, and maybe I can do surgery on his crop. What? If, if it doesn't improve. Yes, that was one of the things that he did tell me. Wow. If it's too yeah. hot and it's burned, you can see burn marks. Yes, exactly. And, huh. and I mean, I, I had, I think, two thermometers always measuring that it didn't go above a certain degree. And, yeah, you know, but... Okay. Yeah, so, it's definitely something that I wouldn't recommend at all. So but when, that, like I said, that's just my own opinion. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to hand feed a high summer car. That's why, like, mm -hmm. um, they wanna like usually sell you a full, fully a weaned. weaned high summer mm -hmm. car and not like a baby. Yeah. But I wanted a baby because I wanted to train love for free flying. Um, yeah. And I guess I got really lucky that I could race him to now a nice yeah. young adult. Um, yes. So when did things got worse with Sasu? Um, after I took him to the vet and uh, the second time he got sick, when I took him to the vet in Rancho Cucamonga, which was, like I said, a great vet. But unfortunately, um, Sasu was just declining. And then that weekend was uh, two days later after I took him to see that doctor was when I had to rush him to the uh animal hospital in culver city and then from there it was just you know even um the next day that i took him to the doctor in rancho cucamonga he wasn't really moving he didn't want to eat um i was having to give him water and i was putting like some honey in his water to give him like a little bit of energy but he was just on a pillow and a blanket the whole time and i know he was in pain so i you know, trying to do the right thing. I took him to the hospital thinking they're going to help me. And it was very far from that. So um, let me back up right now. So how hard was it to find a good, like, exotic vet? Um, oh, it was super hard. I would have never found uh, the place in Alta, Alta Loma, I think it is. Um, if you wouldn't have told me I've already been to that. Yeah to that vet um but like they all tell you oh we're the best exotic bird you know doctor and then you you know you find out for example like the bird clinic it says literally bird clinic of course the reviews will only show the good reviews but when you do some digging and you read the actual bad reviews then you realize the you know the kind of place that they actually are yeah yeah totally um, so yeah. it's super hard. Yeah, because I experienced that too. I went to the exotic vet here in Pasadena with Dino uh, six years mm -hmm. ago. And then they couldn't see me even though they were open and everything. And Dino mm -hmm. could just barely lift his head. He was okay. And then they gave me like three other numbers. And I ended up calling three other vets, bird clinics. And then I ended up going... Mm -hmm. Like, you know, nobody was available. It's just so hard to find a vet. And I had to, like, just watch him die tragically. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's just, like, how one vet recommend you to another vet. And that was mm -hmm. the case because then mm -hmm. you ended up in access, right? So what yes, happened yes. in access and how did that vet treat you? And that was the third vet you saw with your hyacinth macaw. Yeah, that was the third vet. Um <sighs> That place is horrible. As soon as I got there, I should have just known to just leave. Um, I got there. And why didn't you call me? Um, I think I was just so desperate. I just, you know, uh, I know I had already, like, called you and asked you for advice and things. But I think, sorry, my dogs are playing with her chew toy. I think it was just, like, like I said, just out of desperation, I thought my, my bird needs a hospital. And I was kind of like, because I know vets are not that great. You know, at, at a certain point, I was like, no, he's going to be fine. I'm going to give him the medicine. I'm going to be patient. Mm -hmm. Then when I saw he was declining, I 
try to get him the best help that I could, thinking at a hospital they'll be able to do something that I can't do here at home. Well, I had already called them, so they knew who I was when I was coming in. Mm. As soon as I walked in through the door, they ripped my bird out from me. He was in a in a, in a pet carrier. And Wait, they, they just, just strapped took... your bird out of your hands without even grabbed, starting to... Grabbed him. Mm -hmm. You didn't even fill Grab out it. any formula, anything, or sign anything, or let you, they didn't let you wait in a waiting room. You just came in with a crate nope. of a hyacinth macaw, and they as, just grabbed it out of as, your hand. Yep, I walked through wow. the sliding doors. I was going to go to the front desk to check in, and uh, I hadn't even checked in when they had already took my bird. They took him in the back, and I'm asking them, like, where are you taking him? And they're like, we're going to get him help. We're going to, you know, we're going to see what he needs. He's really bad. And then I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to sign in, and then they're going to let me go in with my bird. Well, that was not the case. First, they signed me in. Then they said I had to wait for them to charge me. After they did that, I demanded to see a doctor and to see my bird, and they refused. So I, you know, continued arguing with them, saying that I needed to see my bird, and I needed to talk to the doctor about what's going on. And... Um, uh, yeah, they brought me in to see the vet, and I'm thinking they're going to bring out my bird, and she's going to go over everything with me, but no, she came by herself. Um, young vet, I'm thinking maybe she was just not that experienced, and uh, she kind of scolded me about, you know, the condition of my bird, and that he was in a really bad shape, and that what had I been doing with him, and that these types of birds, you know, like, in other words, not anybody can have them, and they need a lot of attention, and I explained to her everything that I've been doing, and everything was by the book, and I explained to her when I got this bird, I did all the tests that were needed, and I give him the best food, and I, you know, everything that was recommended to me by the vets, that's what I've been doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then she pretty much, in other words, told me that there was no hope for that, for him. And I said, So well, she says have... already, like, he's going to die, they're not going to mm -hmm. save him, like, Yeah, she front. was being very, yeah, she was being very negative. She told me there's probably not a chance that he's going to make it. We're going to do everything that we can. Um, they put him in an incubator, and they try to keep him warm. And but she pretty much was being very negative about prepare yourself because your bird's not going to make it. And I'm telling her, please, like, do whatever you have to do. But help me save my bird. And she was just continuing to be negative. So I'm thinking they don't really want to do much to help me. They're already saying no, no, no. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, can I, can I just take my bird? Like, never mind, forget this place. And they, they refused to give him back, to give me back my bird. Wow. They refused to give so him back to me. Once you walk into Access, Culver City, they snatch mm -hmm. your Hyacinth Macaw baby out of your hand. You didn't even sign yet the papers. And that was the mm -hmm. last time you saw your Macaw. And when you oh, asked them awesome. to give you your bird back, they it's decline you and say mm -hmm. no. And by the way, he's going to die. Yeah, that's pretty much what they did. Wow. Yeah, That's they crazy. had like zero hope, cool. zero, um, like they didn't even sound like empathetic or like, okay, you know, I hope that this doesn't happen to him, but we're going to try our best. They were just being really negative from the get-go where I said, you know what, I didn't get a good vibe. And I said, you want to give me back my bird? I will take him somewhere else or I will take him home. And they said, no, they that they weren't going to do that because the bird's really bad. And and that they needed to do whatever, you know, that they need to do, which was my argument with, with them. It's my bird, but yeah, they didn't. I wonder what they did. No matter did. how much I cried and I plead to the, to the vet, like, save him. I don't care about the money to save him. They made sure to charge me for full treatment, what it would have been to save him, which was, <laughs> I think, over five grand. They charge um, you five thousand dollars. Yeah, they charged me five thousand dollars up front. And, and kill they said your if bird. any, yeah, and they said if anything was left over, if he didn't make it, they would refund me. But trust me, they they racked up that bill. Um, wow. You know. Wow. Yeah. I'm sorry, but this yeah. is like that's monsters for me. That's yeah. so cruel and just beyond my comprehension. Like, yeah. They know already he's going to die. And then they mm -hmm. still charge you five grand. And mm -hmm. then they didn't even want you to see him anymore. So 
once you walk in with that was the last time he was alive and you had yeah. him sick for like a week you know mm -hmm. and he was like alive once you walk yeah. in there how long did it take for him to die like uh, the the gap like when did you get the call uh, it was about an hour after I dropped him off. I drove from Culver City to Montebello, which is not even that far. And as soon as I got there, the doctor called to tell me that she was sorry, uh, that my bird hadn't made it. And I was like in total shock and obviously emotional. And I didn't understand. I really think that my poor bird, besides what he was going through, the stress just kind of put him in a shock where... Uh, I don't even want to imagine what he was going through, but I think it was just like the stress of not knowing who is there, what these people were doing, you know, because yeah, I had him sick here, but he was stable. I had him drinking water, you know, I had him in a pillow and an hour later he's dead. Yeah. That doesn't sound right to me. No. Wow. No. So you called me and I remember like you told me that um, you asked for your bird back and the response from mm -hmm. that, that was like, let us do what we do best. Basically yes. really like really mm -hmm. cold and yeah. like, you know, like shruff and yeah. mean and, and I was just shaking head back then. So I asked you for permission if I can write a Yelp review for them and you says, yes, go mm -hmm. ahead. So I wrote it in a third yes. person and everything what happened to Cecil, this is the review I wrote for Access. Mm -hmm. And they saw that review and they called Yelp and Yelp took it down because I wasn't the person that experienced this because yes. it, I was in the third person. But right. then I also mentioned that I have once an experience with uh, with Access Culver City, where my mm -hmm. old friend went. Uh, we went uh, together. My one of my free flying ex friend, the bird was severe clip, and we wanted yes. her to get imped. <laughs> and that friend was gay. So once mm -hmm. we went into that hospital, that gay, we got a gay vet doctor. He was mm -hmm. so interested in my gay friend instead yeah. of that bird. And to make it worse, like he didn't imp it, they pluck out more feathers from her. They took that bird, her name was Yara, out of our sight into another room. And, and when they came back with like six pulled feathers, like the clip feathers, she was yeah. shaking and scared and really in pain. And mm -hmm. she was all like very sweet because she was more feisty at that time. Yeah. She was like mm -hmm. kind of like a wild bird, not wild, but like not really yeah. like cuddly sweet. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. she was so cuddly and my gay friend loved that she was all of the sun so cuddly and he didn't get the connection that she got harmed and violated by these vets. Angry. Oh. Of course she was angry, <laughs> but it was really quick and fast. Did you get so it three on each side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here we are. And these are the primes, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we're hoping to see quite soon. Plus, yeah. when I check on that bird, my gay friend told me that the gay doctor called him up to ask him out for a date. Yeah. And I yeah. just thought that was so unprofessional. And I include yeah. that in my Yelp review. They hated mm -hmm. that. I even filmed the whole um, vet visit. Yeah, I seen the video. Wow. the access clinic yeah. so that clinic yeah. is super shady mm -hmm. and just unprofessional and just a ripoff they are a scam yeah. and a ripoff i remember I, when you did the review too like i wanted you to do it because i was a wreck after zazu passed away for months i didn't even have like the effort to go and write them a review so i was asking you to do it in my name and they didn't even allow you to do that no, they took it down. And then mm -hmm. I reposted it and they took the second one down too. Yeah. So I just let it be because I got just so like, I had to take a step back and say, okay, God, this is in your hand. Revenge is yours. Yeah. I'm not going to do anything. But down the road, I would love for Jessica to tell her story. And now mm -hmm. finally you agreed um, to, to tell your story, what happened to you with this shady vet. Yeah, it, 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 it was a long time before I was able to like talk about it and it still hurts to think about what my poor little bird went through.
you know, as I was just trying to do the best that I could for him, unfortunately, it was out of my hands. And unfortunately, I went to vets seeking help, thinking this is what vets are supposed to do. But sadly, out of three of them, only one of them cared, but it was too late. Yeah. Just unreal. The whole situation, what you went through, I felt like I went through with you once again, what Dino mm -hmm. went through, because I just felt your pain when you were like really yeah. back, like back. I was then. really hurt. I was, yeah. me, Zazu was my child. So I was, I, I mean, I think you remember me calling you out of frustration that age just crying and crying yeah. and asking for prayer. And like, I did everything that I possibly could. And yeah, unfortunately, it was out of my hands. And then even with access, when I went back for his body, uh, because I wanted to have him cremated, uh, I, um, they didn't even know where he, they had his body. What? They lost his body? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. They, they, it took me a long time waiting there because they were checking in freezer to freezer to see where he was. And they told you they can't find his body? Yeah. Wow. They were they were talking to each other between employees like oh where's this bird where's this bird they went to one of their freezers and checked and he wasn't there and they went to another and another and they didn't even know where my bird was. This is a hyacinth macaw, the biggest parrot in the world, and they couldn't find him. They couldn't find him. Mm -mm. How can you not find a blue body? Wow. I don't know how many dead animals that they have over there must be a lot if they're looking and they can't find them i feel like this vet especially in access in culver city i felt like once they see a sick animal and this is like like mm -hmm. the new trend that's going on in veterinary care instead for mm -hmm. them to suffer they would rather euthanize it yeah because i just like had experience with even pasadena humane society it's a kill shelter so basically if they see a um an animal, no matter if it's a bird, cat, or dog, suffer, they say, oh, we will humanely euthanize it. And I was like, please mm -hmm. don't kill it. Like, we don't kill animals here. We just euthanize it. For mm -hmm. me, euthanization is killing. You take away the right of life. Yeah. And they don't see it as killing. They see it as, oh, we take away the pain. We are the gods. We are humanely yeah. euthanizing it. So it has no pain and it falls asleep in peace. For me, yeah, that's but have just... They tried yeah, but have they tried to actually treat the bird to save it? You know, there is another bird that, um, a, bird, a, dog, a vet, I'm sorry, that was really good. Uh, before Zazu, I had uh, a little Indian ringneck, and he was suffering from, when they sold him to me, something was wrong with him. And that's a whole other subject with people that sell you birds that they know they're sick and they just don't tell you. The bird had like neurological problems and I thought he was suffering. So being a new bird owner, I didn't know what to do other than maybe, you know, he needs to be euthanized because he's in pain and he had like neurological problems. Actually, there was one vet in La Habra, uh, La Habra Animal Hospital. And, uh, you know, that vet really, really, really tried to do different treatments before he actually said okay this is it you know but unfortunately most of them like you're saying oh the bird uh, the animal is sick let's humanely euthanize it and they don't even offer it a chance or a treatment or anything like that yeah they don't even try to save it they just want to mm -hmm. kill it yeah yeah wow yeah but unreal. it's really sad unreal and then unfortunately a lot of them are like that with Zazu I was so afraid that they had uh you know euthanized him yeah. And that's something that I would just have to live with, not knowing. Yeah. And then if you go to Access before, like, if you read the reviews on Access, like, um, there are, like, over, I think, like, over 50 hidden reviews, and they're all negative and not recommended. It's, like, in another folder down below, not recommended. And if you click on those non-recommended reviews from um, Access from that vet in Kobe yeah. City, you mm -hmm. can see that so many people are saying the same thing, that they kill yeah. their dog, their cat, their bird, their duck, mm -hmm. their chicken, when they came to just try to save it. It's yeah. incredible. Like, and those voices got, like, my review got taken shut down, down, shut mm -hmm. down, or, or hidden. Pushed away. So mm -hmm. you can't yep. even see it. And they yeah. have, like, what, like, three, four stars right now on Yelp, which is all lies. Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah. Unfortunately, they only uh, Yelp and, and the sites, you know, they only put the good ones in the top. But I think the bad ones are so important for us to go and check to see what those are about. Yeah. Because those say the, you know, a lot of true things that happen with people. Yeah. That's the true unfiltered mm -hmm. raw voice of the audience. Yeah. Of the customers. Yeah. That get silenced. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Incredible. So yeah, okay. now, um, what would have you done differently with all the knowledge that you know now? If I can go back and tell myself, you know, or like in, my, in the future, like I said, I do want to hopefully one day have another high ascent. So it was amazing. And he just left like a great imprint on me. And I definitely want to, you know, be able to have a healthy high ascent one day. So definitely lesson I learned was number one, do not get a bird that's not fully weaned um i think definitely leave that to the professionals or you know uh the bird is in my opinion will have hopefully less chances of being sick or something being wrong with it if it's already off a of formula and you know healthy strong bird and two definitely not rush to the vets when I, you know you think something is wrong mm. because sometimes unfortunately it's worse than what it actually is and then from my experience, it ends up being, you know, not worth it. Um, so that definitely, those are two things that I definitely take away from all of this is one being that it's already, you know, weaned and, and mm -hmm. don't trust vets. Unfortunately, that's a lesson that I've learned the hard way. Yeah. Um, you know, I think always like, um, you need to know if you have parrots, you need to know how to self-medicate and yes. know what's mm -hmm. going on with them and not to rush yeah. to vets, especially like during Christmas when Glory Bit yeah. was big. This was like four mm -hmm. years ago. Like it yeah. was Christmas, everything was closed and I had to self-medicate. Yes. And then yes. three days later when the vet was open and I went over him, he says, you did a great job. It didn't get infected yeah. and it was great. Mm -hmm. You know, like I saved my bird. And then he yes. also like, you know, uh, recommend me to do some reconstruction down the road or something. I was like, no, it's fine. It will grow out. And it did. It grew out nicely. Yeah. <laughs> but the point yes. is like, if you have a sick bird and you bring it to the vet, just be aware that you will never see your bird alive again. Yes, and your bird is, is going to die alone with all these strangers around them in white gowns yeah. with bright lights and yeah. a very cold metal table which will and be that the last is, thing that is something very hard to live see. with after like that i blame myself for so many things you know because i feel so bad with what sazu might have been feeling in his last moments like i know he knew things you know mm -hmm. they're very smart yeah i would rather like like have my pet my sick animal mm -hmm. die in my hand with me together and go yeah. with him through the rainbow bridge instead of him yeah. dying alone with strangers with strangers yeah and absolutely. in this cold metal table room you know yep and like and you're right about self-medicating and you know natural remedies i'm a big believer in those now and unfortunately sometimes we live in a world where you know people want to leave everything to the vets but that doesn't always work that way yeah. you know if, in the wild they don't have a vet in the wild they have natural remedies and they have you know how things are naturally so yeah definitely a lot of research and yeah self-medicating uh, it's just something that we have to open up our you know our minds too and and it's great to be able to help your own bird like you're saying yeah but also in the wild it's the survival of the fittest and the most um healthiest so in the wild mm -hmm. if a bird is sick he won't yeah. have any chances he's gonna yeah. die anyway because a predator yeah. is gonna come get him whatever yeah. that's the reason why birds hide their sickness and they yes. don't show that they're mm -hmm. sick because they have to always like act up like they're tough and they are healthy yeah. so they won't yes. be prey for other birds yes or animals mm -hmm. yeah yeah so what's your advice for others kind of like what i said about um you know what i would do myself again is don't trust in vets 
and don't get a bird that's too young. It, it, that's just my own opinion, mm-hmm. you know, where they're very delicate, you know. Um, but definitely my biggest advice for people would be just do your research on these vets before something happens and you know just don't trust so much in them because sometimes they're not really there to help you yeah they're there to that's take just honestly it yeah. they just see money and you know like dr nemitz the, the bird clinic mm. it's ridiculous they charged me i believe an extra 150 dollars to be seen that day even though i'm telling them something is wrong with my bird wow you know it's kind of like i thought you were supposed to be a, a, a vet to help the animals but it's like well if you want an appointment the same day you have to pay extra this much wow it's that's like crazy that's yeah, the emergency fee or something like that yeah they just want unfortunately sometimes the money yeah. and they lose track of you know humanity uh, yeah and the animals yeah health mm-hmm. and prioritizing prioritizing the animals health more than anything yeah that's so true yeah. And then the fact that they don't want you to go back there to see what they're doing to your animal, like all that stuff, it's just very, very weird to me. So it shady. made me lose trust. Yeah, so shady. If a vet takes your animal out of your hand and you have to wait in another room and they are alone with your animal in another room, don't go back to that vet. Don't trust no. that vet. If a vet no. says, okay, you can stay in the room and you can watch my process, he's confident mm-hmm. and that's a good vet. That was the vet yeah. in Alta uh, Rancho in Cucamonga. I can always stay in the room. I had a couple of vets who take my bird out of my sight and they would scream and cry mm-hmm. and that vet wouldn't even give a shit or even care, you know? Mm-hmm. Where I'm just like, wow, I'm not going to go back there. Yeah. Like, I yeah. want to know what you're doing. Access did the same. They took your Mm-hmm. the macaw the catalina macaw out of our sight and then in the other room they pull the life feathers so that we wouldn't see how painful yeah. it was for the animal because they're so cold-hearted and yeah. then when she came back she was all shaky and really sa- like scared and and really in fear and then pain yeah you could yeah. see that that bird was in pain um yeah. so yeah it, it's just crazy because those vets they work as a doctor on dead animals they have to cut open mm-hmm. dead animals to learn their craft so they mm-hmm. see dead animals every single freaking day of their life yeah so if some mm-hmm. another animal died they don't freaking care they just will no. charge you and they did their job and that's yeah. it they don't and care it's about their family member mm-hmm. yeah. yeah it's just another client patient money order whatever and it, and it's sad that the ball's in their court because we're going to seek their services. It's like, what makes, what gives them the right to take your animal and go somewhere else with it where you're not seeing it? But like I said, we're at their mercy because we're at their office. It's like, you wouldn't drop off your child at the pit pediatrician and then take them in the back and let them do whatever treatment they felt like it like you would absolutely not allow it yeah uh, why do we allow them to do that with our pets exactly and most people are not aware that if you s- sign in in a check-in desk yes. that they have the make you print. sign a disclaimer if yep. anything happens to your animal and it dies they are not mm-hmm. liable and you have to sign that off absolutely to get these services. And- and I and I explained that to them before I signed it. I said, I don't, I don't agree with this. And they said, well, if you want our service, then you have to sign it. So they kind of put a gun to your head and tell you well, you're signing it. Because really, what choice do you have? If you would have said like, hey, I want my bird back. I won't sign it. Would they have given you even your bird back? I, that, I, that was before I signed it. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Because I was once, like, that was, like, 10 years ago on a vet in Raymond here in Pasadena. A little cockatoo got sick. Caught new cockatiel. I had a little baby cockatoo. I, I spent, like, $20 for him in a bird mark. And I was so happy. Came home. He had, like, also sour crop. He couldn't keep his food down. I rushed mm-hmm. him to the vet. And then the vet, same situation, snatched uh, my cockatiel out of my hand. I didn't even sign any papers yet. And they put him Mm -hmm. immediately in the incubator. And then when I was looking in the papers and I didn't feel comfortable to sign it, I told that vet, listen, I want my bird back. I don't feel comfortable. I want to go home. They would Mm -hmm. not release my bird Mm -hmm. to me. And then then 
the, the doctor came out and I made a scene there. I was like, no, I want my bird now. I want my bird now. And then when they came with an estimate, it was at $990 for a mm -hmm. cocktail that I paid for 20 bucks, right? Yeah. And back then mm -hmm. I was like, I, I was just a student. I didn't have money. I didn't have the $900, $900 in my credit card, you know? Mm -hmm. So they, the doctor came out and she offered me an ultimatum. She's like, listen, um, you can get your bird back, but because we put them in the incubator for five minutes, you owe us now $50. But if you want your bird back, you pay the $50, but this bird is not going to make it. So if you want him to live, I can take care of him, but then the bird is mine. And I was like, what? Wow. I look at this doctor's vet's face and I was like, yeah. hell no, give me my bird back. I'm going to pay $50 to get him back. Yeah. And I was uh -huh. like, hell no, you're not taking and stealing my bird, you know? And it was a beautiful pearl color, white with like, like some check, like my, my cockatiel was so beautiful, like really rare yeah. cockatiel. And she yeah. was greedy to get my bird. And that was wow. a vet. That was a vet doctor here in Raymond, wow. um, vet in Pasadena. And I will never forget the greediness, the coldness, the cold heartedness yeah. and the the demeaning spirit they had towards me and I pay fifty dollars, I walked out, I cry, and three hours later my bird died in my hand. Wow. Well at least she died at home. She did. She yeah. did died at home with me and I was just sobbing and it took like mm -hmm. probably three weeks to get over this. Mess. Yeah. It was so painful. Yeah. It is really painful when that happens when it's also Past, I know I cried for a solid two months at least. Cried, cried, cried. Like yeah. he really was my child to me. And people didn't really understand how painful, you know, how painful it is and like how traumatic it is. And you lose your hope in yeah. humanity, you know. And it doesn't matter if it's a $20 cocktail or a yeah. $30,000 macaw. It's mm -hmm. your baby. It's your yeah it's yours you love yeah. that bird it's a family member it's a part of mm -hmm. you it's your soulmate yeah exactly you know like i told you that that they had access if it's if it's money you want to save my bird i don't care but save my bird you yeah. know that no they didn't really seem to be you know were so negative from the get-go yeah they didn't want to give you your bird back from the get-go yeah, they I think they just, yeah, I think they just saw it. They thought it was too sick to bounce back or something, but I think they forgot this little thing called miracles happen. And they just didn't have the time for that. Maybe they're too busy. They had so many people, mm -hmm. like so many people in line for their animals to be seen. It's like next, next, next. That's kind of what it felt feels like. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, they are yeah. like over the top and they just kill, kill, kill. Mm -hmm. So they, they have less work. <laughs> I don't know what they're thinking, but yeah. Maybe yeah, like not all vets is bad. I know some mm -hmm. people who have good vets. Like, yeah. you know, there's some, but they are very, very rare. And once you find a mm -hmm. good vet, start a relationship with them. But the yeah. most vets are greedy. Um, they are just out for like gains and they don't really care about the money pet. yeah exactly it's not very very you're right there are some vets that are really good but finding find one them. once you find one you have to hang on to it yeah that's so true yeah. Uh, yeah. even a exotic vet who knows birds and who knows what they are doing yeah 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 Wow. Sometimes, unfortunately, you know, like I trusted you more, like, you know, people that have more experience with birds. I also called another friend who used to breed birds, who has been around the cause. And, you know, it's almost like it's sad when you trust unlicensed people more than you would trust a licensed vet. Yeah, totally. But that it goes to show something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for telling your story and mm -hmm. doing this to have a voice and to warn people. Um, yeah. Because, you know, like, you are not the only one. There are probably a lot of others out there, bird owners, dog owners, cat yeah. owners, who have also bad yeah. experience with vets. 
and yeah. uh, no matter what type of pet you have i hope this video helped you to understand that not all vets are good and that your mm -hmm. pet can die once you check into a vet yeah so with that absolutely um always make sure if you have a sick animal and you bring it to the vet it might be the last time you will see it unless yeah. you just nurse it at home and just hope and pray and just you know like hope for a miracle mm -hmm. absolutely yeah i'm so yeah. sorry what happened to you um thank you yeah so you're getting another high scent uh god willing yes it's uh hopefully in the future um when the timing is right when you know the bird is at the right age and mm -hmm. yeah god willing i will have a high ascent maybe next this coming year but um mm. yeah <laughs> definitely at you know as you know, when all this happened, I was so discouraged. Like, don't want any bird to ever go through this again. So I thought I don't. I didn't know if I wanted another one. And yeah. you know, I think with the right knowledge and research, and you know, not trusting in vets so much and things like that, I think it can be successful. So I'm gonna give it one more shot. Yeah, because you have so much love to give to another yeah. high scent who yeah. need your love so yeah they're, they're amazing there is always something missing in my heart and it's always my zazu yeah so i know yeah. when i saw him and met him for the first time he was just like love he's such a beautiful beautiful bird and i just fell in love with sasu too and so yeah. happy that i could spend some time with him and train him and show you also like you know um, some tricks <laughs> how mm -hmm. to like oh, yeah. handle him how to hold him how to fly yeah. him you know how to feed him and mm -hmm. you you incorporate that in your lifestyle and yeah. you it took away the fear of a big bird or a high oh scent. absolutely yeah once you we created that bond you know when you helped me understand that this is not an evil bird you know they are very powerful but once i broke through that you know a couple of days later and oh we were just in love with each other that yeah. bird was the sweetest thing that has ever came in my life yeah yeah yeah, I yeah remember they you. are definitely smart and very loving yeah gentle giants they very. are awesome Heisa and Makaza are amazing they are so needy so needy mm -hmm. birds even no matter what age they are even glory's like 30 she's so needy she just wants <laughs> to cuddle and her happy place is just to sit on my shoulder or on my lap and just kiss me non-stop and put the, her tongue <laughs> like lick my face like put her tongue yeah. out <laughs> yeah they really are amazing and their level of affection is just you won't ever find that anywhere else yeah yeah they are unique very unique amazing birds blessing for sure well thank you so much for telling your story i hope um like um you guys um could gain something out of this information let me know what you think comment below and thank you to jessica for um being with me here on um youtube to be have a voice and to warn others and tell your story what happened to you absolutely thank you so much all right cool i will see you later then awesome have a good night okay bye, bye.